Hey there everyone, Hitesh here. Welcome back to the channel. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, go ahead, press that subscribe button. And with this video, today we are starting officially our journey of preparing for certified cloud practitioner exam. So in the last couple of videos, I mentioned that yes, we will be preparing for some of the AWS exam and we need some prerequisite videos for that. And those videos for, were, were for that. If you're watching all this in one go, then obviously you know that. The whole idea so far was to bring you at a certain stage where you have an AWS account. Now, in theory, if I say uh, for the very first exam, the certified cloud practitioner exam, you technically don't need even an AWS account or you never need to go into the console. But I think that would be a really unnecessary thing because if you're learning cloud and you are not able to see those services and you're not planning to use them for a longer run, then I think it's a wastage of an educational resource. Uh, so my goal was to just to give you enough idea that you can set up your budget, uh, leave your anxiety out that you will be charged too much for the AWS or something like that. Uh, all those things are eradicated. Uh, we are not worried about that. We have our billing budgets. Uh, we have actually removed our root account and we have created a separate account. We are going through that. Now, don't worry. We will be again walking through with them in the process of learning for the certified cloud practitioner. And with this, this is the very first start of the Certified Cloud Practitioner series that we'll be putting up on this YouTube channel. And I'll walk you through with all the things which are required to clear up this exam. And we'll be also preparing some of the sample questions and everything will be covered up. So it's a good thing that you hit that subscribe button and let's start our journey. I have, by the way, prepared a whole lot of notes on my iPad. We'll be sharing that as well. In fact, my notes are way more ahead of the videos. So the recording is going a little slow. Anyways, let's go ahead. First, uh, let me share the screen uh, with you. So, so far we are at a position that you are now capable of accessing this screen. What you access in that doesn't really matter. All I want is that everybody who is practicing should not just practice the theory part, but should also see that how things are done in the cloud. I have been using cloud day in and day out for years as a developer first perspective, but now I'm more inclined in the cloud side, pure cloud side of the world. So we have learned about IAM and everything. You don't need to do anything on this screen. That is it. Now, after that, go ahead and search on the very first exam, which is a certified cloud practitioner exam of AWS. This video will give you an overview of what this exam is, how it works and everything. So let me just move this a little bit here. Now, in this video, I'll give you all the more details that what we are about to prepare, how much money is it going to cost if you if you opt for taking the exam and what is the target audience for this exam, what to expect in the exam and what are some hidden tricks of the exam. So this is all about this video. All right. So first of all, this is AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. I highly, highly recommend everybody to get started with this exam because this exam is a breadth exam. That means it gives you so much overview idea about what possibly you can do in the cloud. Probably you will never do it, but what is the possibility that the things which AWS or similar clouds providers actually offer you as a service? That is the goal. So this is the exam which perfectly puts you in that position. You'll be learning about almost all the services that AWS offers. Not all, but yeah, pretty much a lot of them. And this includes compute services, storage services, networking services, machine learning services, even they offer the satellite data. So you should be aware of that these things do exist. Whether I use them or not, that's a different thing. But these things do exist. So you get a lot to learn about them. So this is the page that you'll get on the training and certification page. And this is where they mention what to expect in this exam. First of all, this is a very beginner friendly exam. You don't need to have any prerequisite for this. Anybody can opt for this exam. Whether you are a developer, designer, or just trying to get started into the cloud, anybody can take it. Even people from the management side also take a lot of these exams because they don't require technical expertise. They just walk you and teach and just uh, test you on the uh, breadth of the services that are available. So by the way, this is a foundational level exam as they mention up here. And this exam, the duration is 90 minutes, but here is a secret. Now for some of the people like me, uh, my first language is not English, but the exam paper is usually conducted in English. It is offered in a couple of other languages as well. But since I come from India and I want to give this exam in English, there is also a checkbox while uh, while actually scheduling your exam that, hey, I'm, I'm not a native English speaker. I need extra time. So they actually gives you an extra time. I think in some of the cases, it's 30 minutes, which is quite a big deal. You don't need it for the uh, foundational exam. But in the later on exam, you can check mark that and get an extra time, which is always good. So exam format is 65 questions. You will be getting a 65 questions in this exam. All uh, most of the checkbox kind of exam tick mark this, tick mark this, select the right answer kinds of exam. 
and there are two varieties of them uh, either the multiple choice or the multiple responses multiple choice simply means there is only one correct out of the four and multiple responses means there are usually two to three responses that you have to select usually six options are given to you you have to select two or three the question will clearly state that what number of answers you have to select so make sure you read the question properly these are the two questions are given there is no negative marking into that but the passing marks is definitely a little bit on the higher side the cost is hundred dollar and there is usually no discount for this one as you pass the very first exam the second exam that you gives uh, you get a voucher that hey sometimes it's 50 percent off different percentage of offs are given and you can use that voucher for scheduling your next exam that you can go for. Uh, of course, you can give at Pearson View Center. Previously, there were two options for that. Now it's all Pearson. Or you can do an online proctored exam. Uh, the term proctored exam simply means the moment, the time you will be giving the exam, you will be proctored. Somebody will be watching you, what you are doing. They may even ask you for your government identity as well. So go ahead, present your driving license or whatever the ID you have. You have to present them. Also, they require you to have a clean room. By the term clean room, I mean to say uh, there should be no printer plug-in, there should be no extra screen or something. Sometimes they ask you to move your camera around the home and something like that. But nothing to be worried. This is just to make sure that nobody is teaching you. Uh, you just have to stare only on the screen. There should be no noises. Like little noises are okay if this is uh, surrounding noises. But this is how the proctored exam works. But usually the experience is pretty good. Uh, make sure, one quick tip I would like to give, uh, make sure if you are uh, carrying your laptop or trying to give your exam on laptop, make sure it is plugged into the battery because the interface which AWS uh, opens up in your machine, it consumes insane amount of battery. You might be thinking I have a MacBook and 12 hours of battery backup, but no, no friend, uh, this is not like it. The, the system, the VM that they opens up in your system, it consumes crazy amount of memory and uh, battery. So, uh, make sure you are prepared for that. That's that's the one uh, tip I can give. The language in which the exam is offered is English, Japanese, Korean, simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, and a whole lot of things. Uh, but still, an option is given to you. If you are a non-native English speaker, just tick mark that, get extra time. I always love to get that. I always make sure that whoever is preparing all the students, they also get that. So by the way, I'll walk you through with uh, later on, I'll walk you through which scheduling an exam as well. I'll prepare and schedule an exam in front of you so that you get an idea. Don't worry, I'll walk you through with that part as well. All right. So this is all basics of how you get that. These are the overview. Now, if you want to prepare for the exam, if you click on the prepare exam, it takes you onto this one. This is all about getting to know what kind of exam this is. And they also offer you some of the learning resources and material. You don't need to go through with all of them. I'll just walk you through with some of them which are important. So if you just open this, uh, uh, review the CLF C02, which is the official uh, really code name for the exam. Uh, no worries on that. If you go up this, this is the file that they give you for preparing of what topics you have to prepare and all of that. You don't have to worry that because I'm here. I'll be walking you through with each and every theoretical guide and practical guide which is required. So first of all, uh, this is a very uh, beginner friendly exam. It is independent of specific job role that you have. So you don't have to worry on that part. And this is something which actually targets of how the cloud works, how the economics of the cloud works, how the pricing segment of it works, who is responsible for the security of infrastructure, who is responsible for security of the cloud code and similar kind of things are being tested and are injected uh, into you uh, via this exam. That's the whole idea of it. And by the way, uh, again, the exam content, there are multiple choice and multiple responses has two or more correct responses out of five or more responses. Usually there are five or six of the options. So two options are there, multiple choice and multiple responses. And the most important thing is that usually the percentage is 70%. So usually the exam is of 1000 marks and you have to score 700 out of it. But you don't get the idea about which question is of what marks. Like you have no idea third question is of 10 marks or 12 marks. You have no idea about that. So, uh, and again, if you don't answer anything or if you answer wrong, there is no penalty for guessing. As they mentioned, there is no penalty for guessing. Make sure you understand that part. An exam includes 50 questions that affect your score. So you'll be given more questions, uh, but there are 15 questions in each and every exam of AWS, which are unscored. It means they are just testing that can we include this question in the new set of exam questions. You have no idea which questions they are. They just uh, do it for their own analysis and they keep on rotating these questions. But don't worry, these are not extraordinarily hard questions. 
these are these are just injected to test your knowledge so you don't have to worry so again there is no idea about uh, which questions what marks are there and should i skip this one or that one usually the idea is they are easy go ahead attempt them all and try to guess best what you can do <laughs> uh, but don't worry with this exam uh, walkthrough in the youtube which i'm putting up you will be able to do quite better in this one so again uh, there are uh, has a pass or fail uh, usually you will score 70% which is 700 the scale score is usually of 1000 marks you will be getting marks out of the 1000 so and usually it's very quick i have seen results getting out within like 4 or 5 hours that's majorly it but within 24 hours they actually put up the result and on top of that this is the compliance the another interesting part about this is uh, although they mention these four domains that we'll be testing you on the cloud concept, security and compliance, cloud technology and services, billing, pricing and support, since you don't know what question is costing you what, you have no idea that 24% of this, so should I prepare more of this or this cost 30%, should I focus more on this? You have no, no idea about that. Uh, I think these are just generalized uh, segmentation that this is what we are testing you for. Uh, but I don't think so this actually makes any difference at all because these are just vague overviews. And they say that, hey, this is billing, pricing and support is 12% of the score. They have to make sure while preparing an exam that it costs 12%. But as a, somebody who is learner, I'm giving exams, I have no idea what that 12% is, especially when you have 15 questions, which may does nothing. So uh, this is just for people who are uh, building those exams, not for the ones who are preparing for the exam. And one thing that is strangely good about this exam is how much it covers the breadth of the cloud. So if you scroll out a little bit about it, you'll find that so many of the services are given. So if I scroll this, you'll find uh, so many of the tech stack. Uh, just a second, I'll walk you through with that. Oh, this is the one. So in the Appendix A, Technologies and the Concept, this is all what we have to study. AWS Compliance, Compute, Cost Management, Pricing Calculator, AWS SDKs, Network Services, Migration and Data Transfer, Management Governance, Machine Learning. This doesn't mean that you have to be a machine learning expert. You only have to know what AWS services are offered that you can possibly utilize in the machine learning. So they all want is that you should be aware about the breadth of AWS, what are the possible services being offered, and can they be used or what specifically segment they can be implemented. That's the whole idea of this exam. So don't get scared when you see a machine learning here that, hey, I have to learn machine learning before AWS. No, you don't have to. Uh, these are just infrastructure. What are the services that are offered there? So don't worry. I've seen a lot of people getting scared away that, hey, there's a machine learning. I probably have to take a machine learning course. No, that's not like how it works. So a lot of things are there. Analytic services, application integrates, integration, event bridges, Kinesis, Glue, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. But whole that we'll be doing is we'll be just seeing that, hey, uh, there's a service known as a Amazon QuickSight. What this service is, how does it look like in AWS console? And what theory we can learn about it? So in one or two line, I can give you an insight that, hey, this is the AWS uh, QuickSight. And this is specifically, this is used for. This is the use case. So that when in the exam it is asked that, hey, I have a specific use case, I want to do this. Out of four, which service should I opt for? And you can easily check mark there that, hey, uh, I will use AWS Redshift or I'll use AWS QuickSight, whatever is the right choice. That's the whole goal of this exam. I hope this gives you a better idea of not to get scared about all these services which are mentioned here, but actually gives you a brief idea about, hey, this is all what we are about to come up in this exam. Uh, in the initial phase, we'll be learning about the cloud in general. That actually brings up the types of the cloud which are available, the governance of the cloud which is there in the AWS, what to expect, what to not to expect, uh, what kind of uh, models that they offer, and what's the advantage of the cloud. Remember, these all exams are cloud-centric exam. So always there will be a, a side, an edge that, hey, cloud is generally better than anything else. That's the mindset which these exams wants to give. In reality, majority of the time, this is the case. But yes, there are exceptions as well, where on-prem data is much better and much more uh, cheaper for the companies. But that's a very, very rare scenario. In majority of the cases, we'll just go through and walk through with the cloud itself. So this is the brief overview of the Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. Uh, get ready from the next video. Uh, we have gone through with this. Next video, we'll start our theoretical portion first that what all the things about the government governance, the compliance that we need to run and how does the AWS infrastructure looks like. There's a lot of theory about this exam, so cannot do much about it. So that is it. That is it for uh, this particular video. So welcome on board and let's get started on the 
certified cloud practitioner, make sure you have hit that subscribe button. And I have a small request that, hey, if you really, really support these kinds of videos, uh, make sure you put at least 200 comments uh, within 24 hours of the release of the video. Just a small request, 200 comments. It will boost a lot of my morale. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much. And let's catch up in the next video.